All right, guys, so today I want to show you how to hit a world-class forehand, uh, but also then show you how I hit a forehand that's not world-class, but maybe a bit more realistic for a lot of people that are watching this. So here we have Ryan Dickinson. He won the last tournament that we were at, which was in Philadelphia, a clay court tournament. And uh, yeah, he won the whole thing. Netsan lost in the semis. But Netsan and Ryan were hitting together uh, the morning of the semis and got some video footage here. And I just want to talk about his amazing forehand. So rather than having an early take back, what he's actually doing is to delay the take back. And he's not even got the racket all the way back before his body starts rotating. And this is going to cause a lot of lag and get that racket to come through and his arms come through like a slingshot. So obviously it requires a lot of talent and timing to be able to do this. And even for Ryan, there's going to be times where he has to have a little less separation. If a ball is coming fast or he's returning a quick serve, he's going to have to tighten things up a little bit. And he can't afford to just leave the racket behind and let it come through at a million miles an hour. So you've got to be able to adapt to different situations, even when you do have a forehand like this. So if you look at my swing here, obviously I don't have nearly the kind of lag and racket speed that Ryan does. But what I am doing to get a pretty good kinetic chain is to synchronize the rotation of my body with the supination of the arm. So I try to rotate and supinate at the same time. That's going to lay the wrist back a little bit and then the racket can come through and accelerate through the shot. So I've been working with Nitsan to try and develop his forehand kinetic chain. And the issue he had is that when he takes the, the racket back, the first thing he does is to supinate the arm and to lay the wrist back. And then he rotates into the shot. So he's not rotating, supinating, and then that creating the lag to where it comes through fast. He's kind of got it uh, a little bit backwards. So here you can see Nitsan's kinetic chain has improved. He's synchronizing the rotation with the supination. That then lays the wrist back and he can generate the power and just hit a cleaner stroke than when he's got the uh, kinetic chain in the wrong order. Just one last point, you'll see this from uh, golfers, and I'm sure it happens with baseball players as well, where the better the player and the more power they have, the more that they are moving their body before they have completed the take back of their swing. And it's the fire in the body first that's going to bring the club through or the racket through quick. So, you know, again, I'm not bad at golf, but I don't have that kind of separation. When I get to the top, I sort of bring everything through together. The best players in the world, they are starting to move their body before they have completed their take back. And again, that creates a lot of lag, but also is uh, it can be a little bit difficult to time. 